Okay, let's run through an example uh, based on what we have discussed of various uh, deflection calculation procedures. Uh, the example what we are dealing with is a cantilever beam of span 3 meter and it has a size of 300 by 600 mm, right? And it is subjected to maximum bending moment of 150 kilonewton meter under service conditions due to uniformly distributed load. And uh, the beam is reinforced with four numbers of 25 mm diameter on the tension side. So this is a cantilever, right? So this is the uh, uh, loading that we are talking about. And you have three meter and it is a rectangular beam and the moment uh, what we are looking at it is in the cross section is uh, service moment is 150 kilometer meter and we are going to use m30 concrete and fe 500 grade of steel respectively and let's see how to compute the short term and long term deflections okay again these are the input parameters that are given power is 50 mm so our effective depth is going to be 600 minus 50 which is 550 millimeter an area of steel is four numbers of tension steel so this is a cantilever section so when i take a section here i am going to have more steel at the top and probably you may have lesser steel at the bottom okay so you are going to develop tension here so that's why we are putting ast here and this is going to be ASC, right? So what is PT? It is going to be 100 into 1964 area divided by B into D, which works out to be 1.19 percentage, right? So let's look at this. Uh, so this is your uh, cross section. So first we need to identify the sectional properties. Let's calculate moment of inertia. So we are going to say because it is a cantilever beam and I'm, that's why I am having more steel on the top and I am going to put some steel, a hanger bar to hold the stirrups and a nominal bar. So let's say I gross is basically BDQ by 12, 300 into 600 Q by 12. So you work out with gross moment of inertia as 54 into 10 to the power of 8 millimeter per 4 and uh, YP, the tension most fiber is D by 2 which is 300. AST is 1964, that is given to us. So EC elastic modulus is 5000 square root of 30, 27,386 megapascal. So using that, I can calculate my modular ratio as ES by EC, which is 7.3, which works out to be ES by EC is 7.3, which is a modular ratio. So that we have, we are going to use it to calculate your uh, position of your neutral axis, right? by taking the moment of concrete area and steel area. If I am taking this moment of this uh, concrete in compression, let's assume the neutral axis depth is x. So it's going to be b is 300, right? So this area is going to be 300 into x. And the centroid of this is going to be at a distance of x by 2. So you, you know that 300 into x square by 2 will be your moment of area in compression about the neutral axis. Similarly, what is the moment of equivalent area of tension? It is going to be M into AST, which is the equivalent area of steel similar to that of concrete. And that is acting at a distance of 550 minus 6 about neutral axis. So that also you take. So when you equate them, you can find out X is equal to 186.86 millimeter. So what would be lever arm? The lever arm would be d minus x by 3 because the compression force is going to be a linear it is going to be acting at the distance of x by 3 so that lever arm is going to be d minus x by 3 which works out to be 487.7 all these parameters we are going to use in calculations of deflection so we are first finding out what all the parameters that we are going to plug into the equation that we have discussed that is why we are doing this calculation okay now using this values, now we can get your cracked moment of inertia. Now cracked moment of inertia, you are taking it about neutral axis. Okay. So again, we go back to this. For this section, if I take moment of this area about this, for this rectangle, it is going to be bx square by 3 will be your moment of inertia of concrete about this axis. Then using parallel axis theorem, so this plus 
m into ast times this square distance square will give me the total cracked moment of inertia so that's what we're going to do here which is b x square by 3 okay it should be x square okay sorry b cube b x cube by 3 so it is b x cube by 3 plus m into ast which is the equivalent uh, concrete area for the steel what is provided and that is acting at a distance of 550 minus 186.6 so as we said parallel area parallel axis theorem basically this is area times the distance square okay so this distance between the neutral axis and the uh, area of steel is this 550 minus 186.6 square so when you do that you get your cracked moment of inertia 25.43 into 10 to the power of 8 so if you go back what was the gross moment of inertia we got gross moment of inertia was 54 into 10 to the power of 8 and we got cracked moment of inertia as 25.43 so you can see roughly the cracked moment of inertia has become half of uh, what we got for a gross moment of inertia right so the crack moment of inertia is only 50 percentage of what the crack moment of inertia is now that you've got gross moment of inertia and crack moment of inertia because i need these values ig i cracked right and your x right and your lever arm to calculate i effective okay that is why we are doing all these things right so let's say now what is cracking moment capacity so that is very easy and modulus of rupture is 0.7 square root of 30 which is 3.83 megapascal and uh, cracking moment that will produce this modulus of rupture stress is fcr into section modulus so when you do that cracking moment for uh, capacity for this section is 68.94 kN meter now that i got that and what is the expression for the effective moment of inertia it is cracked moment of inertia divided by 1.2 minus mr by m times ez by d so mr is your service moment uh, or this is your cracked moment sorry so this is mcr i should it should be mcr okay by m and this is your lever arm by effective depth and this is neutral axis depth by effective depth and this is your flange if you have but anyway we are doing a rectangular section so bw and d are one and the same so this actually will become one right so if you plug in this equation so icr we have already calculated as 25 point something into 10 to the power of 8 and uh, mcr is 68.94 service moment is 160 kilonewton meter and lever arm we worked out to be 487.51 and effective depth is 550 and neutral axis depth is 186.86 by 50 so when you plug in all these things you get your i effective as 1.055 times icr you see here now the moment what we are applying is pretty high it may be very close to that of your yield moment that is the reason i effective is only probably 5.5 percentage higher than your crack moment of inertia that means it's it has gone very close to that of yielding moment the service moment is very close to that yield moment that is why it is approached effect i effective has approached i cracked nearly same right so you can calculate i effective works out to be 26.83 into 10 to the power of 8 millimeter per 4 which is definitely less than gross moment of inertia that we have done now let's now we got all the parameters i effective i got i got all the sectional parameters so let's see how to get your short term deflection this is a cantilever right so for cantilever we know that the deflection is wl power 4 by 8 ei and instead of i we are going to use effective moment of inertia that's what we got this value was this 26.83 into 10 to the power of 8 which is the uh, average moment of inertia which is running along the length of your cantilever right so this if you do some simple modification i can express in terms of moment that is acting so which is going to be ml square by 4e i and ec is your uh, elastic modulus of concrete i effective is the one that we've calculated now so you know that so if you substitute these values service moment is uh, this uh, 150 right so that is your uh, 
service moment 150 times uh, L square which is 3000 and uh, divided by 4 into EC into I effective so if you substitute okay this should be 10 to the power of 8 okay 10 to the power of 8 if you substitute you get your uh, short term deflection of 4.59 millimeter and if you go back and now we have got the short term deflection because that service moment includes dead load as well as live load now let's calculate long term deflection what are the components of long term deflection deflection due to shrinkage deflection due to creep and temperature effects here anyway temperature effects are not given so we have to calculate deflection due to shrinkage and deflection due to uh, creep now what is the formulation we have derived uh, uh, deflection is related to curvature now curvature is related to the strain and depth so that is how we came up with this equation delta sh due to deflection is k3 multiplied by k4 times epsilon cs times l square by d now what are these k3 and k4 factor we have already discussed k3 is a factor that accounts for this boundary condition if it is simply supported k3 will be 0 0.125 if it is cantilever k3 will be 0.5 and like that for different boundary condition we establish this from the integration of the curvature right and this is a cantilever beam so k3 will be equal to 0.5 for this case and k4 is an another constant depending upon the difference between pt and pc anyway pc here in this case i am just putting a, some nominal uh, hanger bar to hold the stirrup so I am going to take PC is equal to 0 and PT will be uh, what we have calculated 1.08 or some percentage that we calculated previously. So uh, K3 works out to be 0.5 and we know that code asks us to consider a concrete a shrinkage strain of 0 0.003. So this is the value that is specified in your code. So that's why we are taking epsilon CSS 0 0.003. So if you look at AC code, so they may take a slightly higher value. But this is what IS456 is saying. So we are using it for calculation. So now what is K4? Again, 0.65 times uh, PT minus PC divided by square root of PT minus PC. Now PC is I am taking it as 0. So it is going to be 0.65 multiplied by PT, which is 1.19. Square root of 1.19 is this. You get a K value of 0 0.709. So if the difference between PT and PC is very large, then your k value is also going to be large so in this case i am though i am putting some hanger bars for to hold the stirrups we are you know as good as it may be like for 6 mm bar just to hold the stirrups so even if you include that it won't change much so k4 k4 will work out to be nearly 0.7 or so so now that we got all the values if you plug in you get your stinkage deflection as 1.595 millimeter it's not small okay so now that we have done next step is to calculate deflections due to creep let's see how to do that so deflection only due to creep is we are going to calculate deflection from imposed loads plus creep then we are going to subtract what is the deflection from imposed loads so let's uh, calculate now computation of uh, deflection due to imposed loads plus creep so assuming that the age of concrete at loading is 28 days, creep coefficient is 1.6, right? If you delay the age of loading, then you know that the creep coefficient is going to come down, right? So if you start age uh, loading at the age of 7, theta will become uh, 2.8 or so, right? Which we have seen. So here in this case, theta is 1.6. So what is the reduced elastic modulus? EC divided by 1 plus theta. EC we have already calculated that which was 27,386, which I divide by 1 plus theta, which is 2.6, I get reduced elastic modulus as 10,533. Almost it reduced by two and a half times. So it is only 10,533 megapascals. There is a significant reduction in elastic modulus due to creep effects. So that will have an effect in your long-term deflection. So let us see now. Now what happens to modular ratio? Definition of modular ratio is ES by EC. ES is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 megapascal and then put your reduced elastic modulus. So for long term calculation, what happens to your modular ratio? It has increased at 18.98, right? So it is again increased by this uh, creep, effect, creep effect. Now using the same thing, let's calculate by taking the 
uh, equating the uh, concrete area and uh, uh, steel area we, we are by doing that by equating the moments of these areas about the neutral axis so 300 into x is your concrete area when you take moment about the neutral axis depth it will become 300 x square by 2 moment of concrete area and this is your moment of your steel area so when you equate them you find your neutral axis depth is 265.86 and the lever arm is going to be d minus x by 3 which is 550 is your effective depth x by 3 is 265.86 by 3 so that works out to be 461.38 millimeter and uh, so now that i got let's check what is the cracked moment of inertia and uh, so that's again uh, we are taking uh, a moment about your neutral axis depth so it's going to be 300 into x cube by 3 plus m into ast times distance square so if you do that the cracked moment of inertia is uh, become high so here you can see the modular ratio has increased that is the reason the cracked moment of inertia here it is increased okay so if i am assuming that 70 percentage of the uh, moment is due to permanent loads that means service moment is 150 so i am going to take 0.7 times 150 as 105 kilonewton meter as my service moment so uh, because we have to see what are permanent loads again that will always be there so we usually what is that we have taken you have to take 100 percentage of a dead load 100 100 percentage of superimposed dead load probably 25 percentage of your live load okay if your these values are high that's why the overall uh, permanent uh, moment uh, is going to be sustained moment is going to be 70 percent of your service moment we are taking which is 105 kilonewton meter now that i got this value i have to go back and calculate what is the effective moment of inertia right that again like what we have done previously so uh, this is your cracked moment of inertia divided by 1.2 so you see this is your um, what do you call so this is your m cracking and this is your service moment ms and this is your uh, neutral axis depth sorry this is your lever arm this is your z by d factor and this is your eta factor okay so eta factor that we said one minus uh, this is neutral axis depth by d times bw by b okay so which is this factor so uh, if you substitute uh, the values for that you get your uh, effective moment of inertia as uh, 1.09 times your cracked moment of inertia okay so that is very close to that of 48.8 that we got so if you see that your effective moment of inertia works out to be um, 53.2 which is less than you know in this calculation we need to make sure that the effective moment of inertia is not going to reduce to be higher than your gross moment of inertia that we are making sure that so if you substitute that deflection due to creep uh, from imposed loads plus creep is basically ml square by 4ea now e is your reduced elastic modulus i is your effective uh, moment of inertia so if you substitute these values you get your deflection due to imposed loads plus creep as 4.24 mm now we have already calculated what is the deflection due to only uh, delta i okay so let's do that because the um, moment has come down so if you substitute here the only difference is here i have to use short term elastic modulus right so if you substitute that you get 105 is your service moment l is your 3000 3 meter and 4 and tc which is 27386 and the i effective is basically this which should be 10 to the power of 8 this also should be 10 to the power of 8 so you find that delta i due to permanent loads is 1.619 millimeter now what is the only deflection due to creep i have to subtract this when you subtract that i get the deflection due to creep is 2.591 m so you see here this is due to imposed loads and this has been amplified almost the deflection due to creep is uh, about uh, i would say about uh, 150 percentage of your uh, only due to imposed loads so you see see the deflection due to creep is quite significant right now uh, now that we calculated all the deflections, let us see whether they are meeting the norms that are given in your IS-4 fixes. What do the class 23.2 is tells? So it tells that maximum allowable deflection should be 
L by 250. So that works out to be 12 mm. So whatever the deflection that we got due to dead load, live load, long term effects cannot exceed more than 12 mm for this particular uh, member with a span of 3 meters. So let's see when you add all of the short term deflections plus shrinkage plus screen. When you add all of them, I get 4.59 plus 1.59 due to shrinkage, creep is 2.59, that is 8.77, which is less than 12. So we have satisfied that upper limit of L by 250 for all the deflections, right? So now let us see there is also one more class 23.2b. What is it? It is should be less than L by 350. What should be less than L by 350? which is minimum allowable deflection is 8.57 mm. Again, 3000 by 350 is 8.57 mm. So if you substitute uh, that, uh, that should be only after dead load, after, so after all the tiles are all put and after all the partitions are erected, the deflection due to imposed loads, that is only live load, plus shrinkage plus creep should be less than L by 350. So when you add only delta I plus delta S H plus delta C P, you find that that is 8.39 and it is less than 8.57. So if this value is higher than 8.57, in this case it works out to be okay. But if this is coming out to be higher than that, then we need to increase the amount of steel and redo the calculation or you have to go for a slightly larger depth. So this way we have to check for all the deflections. Okay, so you have to check for both the provisions 23.2a as well as 23.2b. In both the cases, you have to satisfy your deflection limits, right? Right, so let us summarize this module. So, in this module, uh, we discuss the importance of checking the serviceability condition, particularly deflection. In the next part of the module, we will talk about cracking with crack width, how to calculate the crack width. We also discuss how to uh, calculate short term and long term deflections. And we discuss in depth what are the factors that influence the short and long term deflections. And we also discussed IS code requirements, how the del by D values are specified, okay, and how the modification factors are influencing this L by D values. We discussed that. And then finally, we solve one problem to better understand how to calculate the deflections, especially the cantilever problem, and uh, for all the steps, okay. So this is a summary of what we have discussed. So these are the references. Uh, uh, I have used uh, material from Pillai and Mene and WIT, which is another classical reference, which is a reinforced concrete mechanics and design. And I also use provisions from IS4. So thank you. And I would also try uh, acknowledge the help of my PhD student. So Mr. Muttaraja is working as a PhD student with me. So he helped me in organizing all the slides. I would like to thank his help. So thank you. We'll see you in the next part of this module. Thank you.